A few days ago I posted a video uh, showing some weird marks on my 45 auto bullets. I was showing that with the cast bullets there's a dent coming here on the feed ramp or from the feed ramp and that's not a real surprise but also several of these I'm getting a weird mark down here in the powder coat uh, just up from the base of the bullet and in the comments of that video there were a lot of great thoughts great ideas great responses and thank you for that uh, I really appreciate that this video is an update to that I've done a little bit of testing and I recovered some of the brass so let's take a look at that I did need to recover some of the brass and I also wanted to test um, both styles of magazines that I've got. This is the uh, ACT mag. This is the one that comes with my ATI 1911 and this is a Sarco uh, mag that I have picked up since and they have a different, um, they're a little bit different style and so I tested some bullets uh, with both styles of magazines. I wanted to see if that made any difference, and I've also done a couple uh, small tests since I've been back in the garage. So let's take a look at all this. Again, in the previous video, we showed all of the noses have a little bit of a mark in them from the feed ramp. Focus. And then pretty much straight down from that feed ramp mark, somewhere along here, is this little mark. Now, I've had a couple people comment that there's no way that... Uh, you can see where the crimp line was, so there's no way the bullet that was underneath the brass took that big of a hit um, from being chambered. And that may be the case, but if you look, it isn't like a giant gouge. This powder coat is only about a thousandth of an inch thick, so it doesn't take much to uh, to get through it. And again, here's five more that show a little mark here and a little mark there, a mark here mark there, mark here. They aren't all exactly the same, but they're all in generally the same spot on the bullet. I apologize if my voice goes out tonight. The whole family is getting over something. And again, here's another five, and these were all recovered from the ballistics gel. And again, you can see the marks here, here, right there, right here, and right there. And again, the feed ramp mark that's pretty much straight down from it. Well, one of my recent videos, I also shot some of these 230 grain hardball into the ballistics gel. And I told you I only recovered one, and I couldn't find it. And I still can't find it. But while I was at the range, I did find three that had uh, come out the backside of the gel, laying on the ground. I was able to, to find those. And the, you can see the little mark on these as well. Let me get close. Now, these aren't as obvious, but you can, right here, you can see a mark on that bullet. Uh, same place on here, and this one's probably the least of, the, of these three, but you can see one there as well. And you don't see any marks on the nose of these, uh, but you do on the, the side here. And again, it's not like it's a major dent, but it is enough to say, huh, something's going on there. So I was able to recover a bunch of the brass from the range that I had shot through this before. And as I looked at it, all, most of this brass has this little mark in it from ejection. And as I started looking at the, this brass, I started seeing marks like this. As we get the light just right. You see a little dent right there. I thought, aha, I figured it out. That's, well, I haven't figured out what's causing it, but I figured out you would see a little bit of a bend there. These were all once fired cases before, but uh, so some of them have a few marks. But look at all these cases. Just to this side of here, there's a mark. There's a mark. There's a mark. All of these cases have that. But then given that a couple seconds of thought, that didn't make much sense because that mark is right here. And I believe when the case comes out, this part is straight up. And those marks are on the bottom side of the bullet. So that mark should be over here. And none of these cases have a mark on the appropriate side. So I started wondering, am I wrong? Does this case end up with this dent this way? Well, that doesn't make much sense. And I got to looking in here. I've got the recoil spring out right now. 
and there is a mark right there where it's obvious the case is coming out. The extractor is holding the case, the ejector is hitting it, and it is crashing into that side right there causing that dent. And what I believe these additional marks are is as the case comes out and hits, then it's coming back and it's hitting probably right here. And so while I found a mark that lined up on the case that was a good candidate, it was on the exact opposite side of where I needed it to be to answer this question. In that group, though, I did find these, and some of these on the appropriate side. This case has one, but it's so small I can't get it in camera. This case has the ejection mark, but it also has a little dent right there. This one has the ejection mark here, but then it has a little little ding right there, which I think this is probably the mark that left the indication on the bullet on the inside. And finally, one last one. You can see the ejection big dent there, the additional one on this side, and so on the opposite, there's a little mark right here that probably left an imprint in that bullet. But again, most of these, that mark is either so small or non-existent uh, once the case is fire formed. That, that little mark uh, that I think is causing, uh, or the little dent that is causing mark on the bullet, has been uh, removed from the case. Can't find it. Now, most of you know I recently changed my recoil spring here from a 16-pound to an 18.5 pound. And all of the cases that I recovered from the range before were shot with a 16-pound uh, spring. So I went back, uh, back out and I loaded up a couple dummy rounds and a couple live rounds uh, with 18 and a half pound spring to test from these two magazines. I loaded uh, a dummy round with a hollow point uh, and then a live round on top and then another dummy with a live round on top so that I, I would chamber the live round and then fire and so I could eject the dummy that had been chambered. And then I did the exact same thing with this magazine. For the two cases, casings that I got that were uh, fired from this magazine, only this one had one very minor crease right here that might be an indication of what we're seeing. It's so hard to see that I might just be seeing it because I want to. There is something there right here, but it's very, very minor. And for the two fired cases from this magazine, uh, there isn't anything noticeable on those two. Now for the two dummies that got chambered during that process, again you can see where the feed ramp left in, uh, an impression on the nose of the bullet, which means that Mark should be right down in here if it's there. I think that's from being a uh, a previously fired case. I don't think that's from this process. So nothing discernible on that case. And this is the other one from that magazine. There's the feed ramp imprint. Nothing discernible on that case. For the two that were fired from the Sarco mag, again you can see the feed ramp imprints on the nose of the bullet. But again, Nothing showing on the casings. When I came back to the garage, I put the 16-pound recoil spring back in. And I just went on ahead and chambered a couple of dummies. Um, this is one of them. And again, you can see the mark on the feed ramp. That feeding actually kind of collapsed that hole point a little. Uh, this one already had a, a bit of an imperfection, which is why I threw it in a dummy. Um, but I marked it with a Sharpie on the bottom side to see if it would leave any marks while it chambered. And you can kind of sort of see a line, no real dent, but a, a bit of a line. And it matches up with this bullet. It's right at that same spot. And so I, I think that does give some indication that the chambering process is probably at least partially at fault in this. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab a bullet puller and pull a couple of these dummies and see if there's any marks on the actual bullet. I'll be right back. All right, I pulled all six of those bullets, the two dummies from the... Uh, factory mag, the two dummies from the Sarco mag, and the two dummies that were loaded in with the 16-pound spring here in the garage. And while there's no, pardon the pun, no smoking gun, 
I do notice on several, not all of them, but several of them, these couple little lines here. And when I grab one of the bullets that's been damaged before, it seems to just about line up with those lines. And I'm not entirely sure, but I'm thinking those lines are probably coming from my factory crimp die, uh, from my taper die. Let me interject here real quick. After some sleep and a little more thought, these lines aren't from the taper die. They're from the case mouth while pulling the bullets with this inertia puller. So as that bullet would jump out with each whack of the uh, bullet puller, the case would leave a little mark on there. So disregard that. Now I did grab my cheap calibers and measured here and here and then here and here. And as far as I can tell, I'm only missing about one thousandths, which is about the thickness of the powder coat. So I'm not sure if any of the lead's missing at all. It would just be the powder coat. And then one of those six bullets I pulled had that little mark, which may relate to this type of damage. So here's my current theory on this. Um, this is a dummy round. Um, as the bullet is chambered, the breech face comes forward and makes contact with the top of that rim. And as it pushes it forward, it starts to hit the feed ramp, and then an entire case starts to move up as it's pushed. And as it heads up, you hear that click there, that was the jumping out of the magazine. But right there, you'll notice the bullet, the nose of the bullet, is sitting right at the top of the chamber. And on some of these, if I've looked, you know, that's obviously from the feed ramp, but now when I look on the opposite side, I'll see a tiny little mark where the top of that bullet is rubbing along the top of the chamber momentarily. And I think what's happening here is the slide is moving this direction. The force is in this direction. The breech face is putting force On that edge of the rim. The nose of the bullet is providing up, is up against the, the chamber and it's, there's a little bit of friction there. Not much, but a little bit of friction. And so the force isn't this way. The force is this way. The bottom of the chamber is sitting right here. And so in essence the, the slide is squeezing the case between this edge and this point here with a little bit of friction here. And as this continues to come out of the magazine, it continues to turn up until this hits the top of the chamber. And then the rim pops free of those uh, feed lips. And then it slides up the breech face into the um, extractor, goes in line with the chamber in chambers. And so I still think when the bullet is sitting essentially like this, the back here is still captured by these feed lips. The nose is on the, the top of the chamber dragging along slightly. And this is sitting on the, the, the feed ramp and the slide's pushing back here. That's causing just enough pressure right here to cause that tiny little mark on the bullet. And so I could be off in this, but looking at this now, I think this is why people recommend polishing the breech face so that as the bullet is sliding along and then slides up it reduces the friction here. This is why polishing the feed ramp as recommended by some and hated by others uh, may be recommended not just for the nose of the bullet going up but also uh, so that there's less friction right here. I've never heard anyone recommend to polish the top of the feed chamber and I'm not suggesting it either but this may help that very slightly. But I think this is what's going on when people talk about bending these feed lips. Um, Uncle Jim and others have talked about quality magazines. I think Uncle Jim's current recommendation is the Kimber Pro. Um, quality magazines may um, affect the angle of the round it is, as it is chambered, as well as it's been recommended to me by some to adjust these feed, um, the front edge of these lips here. And I believe what that will do is allow 
back of this casing to spring up and pop free at a less extreme angle. So it, you know, as an exaggeration, maybe right now with the standard magazine, my my bullet uh, pops free of the magazine at this angle, and if I were to bend those a little bit, then it might be a little closer to this angle. And I don't think most people are making those recommendations based on a little mark on the side of the bullet. It's just the overall feeding and performance of the firearm. I also think that may be why a slightly heavier spring, recoil spring, helps because that little bit of friction going on there momentarily, the heavier spring actually helps uh, overcome that a little bit easier. So appropriate recoil springs, um, polished breech faces, and proper magazines may help alleviate this. Now it's been pointed out to me a couple times that the semi-automatics are designed to shoot jacketed bullets. And the hardness of that copper jacket is certainly a lot harder than a uh, cast lead. I can't remember the exact BHN on copper. I think I've heard 35 or higher. Uh, now that bullet is full of soft lead, but it does have that, it's kind of like an m, m it's got that hard outer shell. And when you put a cast bullet in there, and it's a softer lead, and then you make it a hollow point even, um, I'm not surprised that you get some deformation, and maybe even, if it's too soft, as you can see here, this is no longer oval. You may get a bit of a crushing of that hollow point. So does that mean no more cast bullets in the 1911? Absolutely not. Uh, this is all about the performance of the bullet on the target, not trying to uh, deliver pristine bullets. The purpose of firearms and bullets is to poke holes in very specific places, and then once that happens, to have certain effects. And that can still happen with cast bullets in this. So now that I think I know what's going on, um, and I know why there's a little bit of mark showing up on the side of my bullet, whether it's cast or even jacketed, um, I can sleep well knowing what's causing it, knowing that it doesn't really matter, and knowing that even with my cheap magazines and my cheap Philippine copy of a 1911, I can still throw large chunks of lead downrange. And without much effort at all, even if the bullets are deformed, it still makes big holes. So that's what I'm looking for. I'd love to hear what you're thinking in the comment section, whether it's agreement, disagreement, further thoughts, whatever the case is. But that's all I've got for this video. So thank you for watching, and God bless.